Okay. So we're going to do drawing a zebra on black paper. Lovely, lovely black paper. So this paper isn't like the stuff I usually use. I usually use stuff that has a a bit of a uh, more of a texture to it, but this one's pretty smooth. So we shall see how it turns out. It could be really, really interesting. I want to definitely, even though it's uh, on the nice paper, and I'll go a little slower, I still want to do my construction drawing first. Just sketch it lightly. Keep an eye on that negative shape. It helps get things this shape here into the proper alignment. And if you go up the neck, you can actually go right, you go right up into the eye. I'm not even looking at the stripes right now. I'm just trying to get the shapes. As soon as I start looking at the stripes, it's going to be a whole different ball game. Remember that even on the animals, if you think about the shapes and things sticking out, you can really see the roundness of his eye because we're looking at it slightly to the, their eyes face out to the sides. So we're seeing it on a three quarter angle almost, even though we're looking at him from three quarter front. And over here, They've got eyelashes, that's so funny. And here's the brow bone, and then here's the cheek. And here's the head. Okay, so, I'm trying to, I'm gonna try to figure out these stripes now. So I'm actually drawing the white stripes, so you would think, you automatically think to draw the black stripes. So in a way, this is really good practice for looking at negative spaces because we're drawing the white areas and leaving the black areas instead of the other way around. Easy to get lost. Definitely easy to get lost. But it's cool how the stripes kind of like trace the contour, the surface contour of the creature. I still think this is a super good mental exercise though. Just trying to remember what you're used to so used to drawing the black. Now you gotta draw the white. So think in reverse. It's kind of interesting mind game. It's so white and so black it looks like paint on his skin. It's so odd. I'm definitely not going to get the same number of stripes across his face. It's just not going to happen. Then when we go in and do darker, we'll make them vary, whether they're on the highlight, like on the cheekbone, 
or on the shadow part so that the stripes will modulate light and dark. Alright, I'm going to start going back and forth. I am going to be using the black, even though we're on black. I'm still going to use the black just to get those sharp edges. And really, mostly what the black ends up doing is knocking the white off. You see, I can use the black to kind of like corral in the white a little bit and work it back and forth. It's a good thing I'm not trying to copy a fingerprint. My goodness. So you see how even in the using this just black and white, getting trying to get some sense of the shape with the shadow a little bit of just a, a little bit of shadow on the white area there's basically no highlight at all on the black or if there is it's super subtle So now we can get into going up into the uh, the main here as well. Okay, I'm going to make some fixes here. I can see that some places out of sync. So I use a little pastel there on his eye because he's actually got brown eyes. And that gives it 
the light comes through and the light comes through an eye it usually lights up the bottom part of the eye with a almost like a glow because the light is going through this liquidy stuff under the cornea so it gives that kind of a eerie glow I'll knock it down a little bit so it's not too bright the highlight actually you want the highlight to be so hot that I'm going to use this chalk to really make that pop and then add some actually I want to use this this is really cool this is a sample white pastel Rembrandt pastels that I got and I, I really like it. A little harder to use because it's got a thicker point. But I'm going to put some of that in the highlight. The surface highlight will be the, the form. So, to protect my paper, so that I can get in and get some detail, I'm going to do this. So I want to hold my hand steady to get a nice crispy line, crispy edge between those lights and blacks. Kind of using the white charcoal to rub in that heavier pastel. Now you see that little bit of blue? Just a touch, just a little highlight. Just that tiny little bit of blue will, and like the little hint of brown in his eye, suddenly adds so much more.
at this point, since it's a finishing, now that it's I'm finishing it, I'm working my way down across it because I don't want to smear it. So this would be, you know, after you get it all basically laid out, the gestalt, you still want to keep an eye on the finish and that the anything that you finish up at a high level of polish, you want to make sure that it's where you really want that focus because that's going to be a, going to draw the eye. All right, let's wrap this guy up, shall we? Usually, if I do something like this, I'll put it either in a plastic sleeve <laughs> or under, uh, frame it up, put it under glass right away. If I do use fixative, I'll only use hairspray. See the little wrinkles in his neck? It's like affecting the stripes just right here. Could go back and forth. I do this when I'm painting too. Go back and forth on the edges a lot because I'm always looking to. It's all about the edge, you know, refining that edge between things, between light and dark. That makes it so striking. It's a strange thing, but I sort of feel like if I have too much of my own artwork lying around, I don't create any new work. So all this, this uh, eraser marks here, I'm going to have to go over it with like a brush and maybe a little bit of water. 
knock off all the charcoal and fuzzy bits here. Almost done. And if you're going to do the whole zebra, then make sure that you really pay attention on the body of the zebra, where the um, highlights are on its belly and its sides as it, it's rounding out. It's going to be a pretty important element. This is basically done. I'm going to do a little tidying up. I might, um, I might just hint at a little background behind the bristle here, because you can see, like along here, there's uh, like a, a lighting, lightening color here, and um, that could be kind of interesting. Not sure yet. I'll make it really subtle, probably like just barely a shadow. Yeah, I like that. That's really cool. That makes that look really cool. Mm -hmm. 